I'm just gonna. The recording is in progress. Balls in your record, John Kerr. Okay. I don't know why I have restored. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, and th thank you for being here. Uh, uh, my apologies for any confusion, but here we are. Um, I won't go through why we had, uh, why we rescheduled this, but um, I I'm so happy that uh, you've joined us. Um, so let's spend the next couple of minutes just introducing um, who we are. Um, if you could say your name and your interest and, and um, just like 15 seconds to 30 seconds. That's what we're looking at. So I'll start. My name is Joan Kerr. Um, I am the vice chair. Oh, somebody has their phone on. Could they turn it off, please, if that's possible? There we go. Thank you. Um, so my name is Joan Kerr and I was appointed by um, IEEE uh, Smart Village um, president to be the vice, vice president of the North American Working Group. There are um, working groups in, in every content, uh, continent. Uh, there's the Africa Working Group, there is a Latin American Working Group, the North American Working Group and the South Asian Working Group. So if you have projects that are in those regions, we would then work with you for the ones in North America, but you would be referred to work with the, the working groups in those areas because they act as your champion at the local level um, in terms of um, <clears throat> uh, uh, reviewing your, your concept notes and uh, working with IEEE uh, Smart Village as a whole to, to get those funded. So that's how it works. So just wanna uh, do that for the record. All right, um, so, uh, Andrew, if you want to go next, and then um, Ashok, and then anyone after that. How was that? Or maybe we could do IEEE first. Uh, yes. Ashok, at, yeah. Um, yes, Ashok please. and um, Ayushik, um, maybe, and then we go from there. You're on mute. Uh, Andrew, you, you are starting. Go ahead. Okay, so my name is Ashok Das. I am the co-chair for this North American Working Group. I am a committee member at the South Asian Working Group. And uh, I am also drafted into the technical committee of the Working Group uh, of the <laughs> Smart Village, IEEE Smart Village. And uh, the charter there is that how do we bring the, the technology we have developed, how do we bring it to the other part of the smart village projects and uh, and integrate some of those uh, what i do as a profession is uh, i i build smart villages so this uh, group talks about how to build it uh, we are the one who build it and we have we are here to share our experience on developing smart villages in india and now we are we are also in africa and venturing into the American, um, you know, indigenous nations. So that is the uh, next goal that we, are, we have. And through the North American Monarchy Group, we are trying to develop smart villages in US as well. Okay. I'll stop there and wait for others. Ayesha, did you want to go next? And then Irene? Sure. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ayushi. I'm a research engineer at Simoksha. Um, I work very closely uh, under the mentorship of Dr. Das for the Smart Villages. And I have done a couple of projects within India regarding uh, Smart Microgrid as well as Smart Aquanet, which is a smart irrigation solution and smart energy solutions. Uh, Irene Hermans, uh, professor in uh, sustainable energy management program at University of Calgary in, uh, in Alberta, Canada, and um, very interested in um, investigating projects in indig indigenous communities that uh, would be appropriate for IEEE. Um, we also have done projects in Africa and Ecuador through our sustainable energy development program. So I'm also interested in uh, projects in um, and some of the other working groups as well, but primarily right now, indigenous uh, indigenous projects that will fit well with IEEE. 
Great, thank you, Irene. So again, just to reiterate, uh, the North American Working Group is primarily focusing on indigenous um, peoples, um, but primarily I use that word, um, and the other working groups have their own focuses. So uh, just, just to uh, restate that. So Andrew, if you could go next and, and your team. Well, thank you so much. This is Andrew Williams Jr. Let me unvideo myself. Uh, this is Andrew Williams Jr. I'm here in, in the, actually on the Tongva land in Los Angeles, California. And we here in California, Los Angeles in particular, the city itself was founded by 44 people, 26 of whom were of African or indigenous descent. So we feel that we have to heal Los Angeles to heal the world, technically. Uh, this morning, I've invited several of uh, the attendees from my extended network. I'm the CEO of the Par XTC Export Trading Company, uh, which was actually launched in 1999 as a result of the work by Kofi Annan and his focus not only on the Millennium Development Goals, but also on the United Nations Global Compact. So when I became president of Five Points Youth Foundation in 2014, I joined that organization and we are in the middle of a, <clears throat> a decade long campaign to register 10,000 additional civil society members and small business owners to hold accountable those major multinational corporations. So we believe the sustainable development goals are in fact the way uh, it's necessary for us to all go forward. We have incoming guests now. I'll begin with the ladies and that's Adrienne Bamboo. I met her here in Los Angeles back in 2012. And while I traveled to Bermuda, she was one of the people that was able to host uh, the first annual Kwanzaa event that brought together the people here in Los Angeles in Lamert Park. But she has an international experience but uh, Bamboo, if you can unmute and introduce yourself, I would certainly appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to try to put the camera too that people can see my real face. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Adrian Bamboo. We are here sitting in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I'm from Senegal, West Africa, specifically from Gori Island, the door of no return that people know about. Uh, and uh, I'm here in Los Angeles since uh, 15 years. But before that, prior to that, I work for Doctors Without Borders in 22 countries as a medical and field coordinator. And here in Los Angeles, I'm a connector. I connect the diaspora to Africa because I work in a country like South Sudan, Burundi, Rwanda, uh, Kenya. I speak Spanish too, I speak seven languages. And I work in Nicaragua and Honduras too. And here I work with the communities uh, bridging the gap uh, between communities. Uh, something that is special to me is um, I have two brothers and one sister from Sen Senegalese, right, like me, who were born in Vietnam because my parents were in Vietnam. You know that Senegal is a French-speaking country and we are all over the places and uh, I'm so happy to be here and thanking uh, Andrew William Jr. to bring me here. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, our most recent uh, guest is Mr. Sharif Balde, His Excellency from uh, the Gambia. He and I have been working together on a daily basis in the afternoons uh, with a group that I introduced him to, Friends of the African Union, which Bam Bamboo is also familiar. But uh, His Excellency Balde, please take this time to introduce yourself and ways that we might work with Gambia to electrify and provide entrepreneurship and education opportunities to the youth in that country. His Excellency. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Peace be unto all of you in the room. Greetings from the Gambia. I am Excellency Sheriff Balde, a diplomatic consultant, uh, mandated to bring uh, meaningful investment and development to all countries of the continent, specifically in ECOWAS. I am from the Gambia. Just, my, just like my Senegalese sister said, I am from the smiling coast of Africa, <laughs> the land of Kunta Kinte. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, we are one country divided by the colonialists. <laughs> when we are together, you speaking together, you wouldn't notice that we are from two different countries. So this is the spirit we want to inject within 
all people of African descent around the world so that we all see ourselves as one nation. And uh, I believe uh, we have the possibility and uh, if empowered to get enough facilities to provide for all people of African descent to participate fully in the newly established free African trade. AFCFTA, which is headquartered in Ghana. And uh, as uh, Prince Andrew uh, rightly said, we are working in establishing a headquarter of a consortium in the Gambia to try and help every entrepreneur, corporation, industry that wants to take a foothold on the, the industrial parks we have around the continent. Thank you very much. I am on a highway. I'm very sorry for the noise, and uh, I pray for our continued uh, advancement as a people. Thank you so much. Well, like my salam, sir. Uh, next, I'm going to ask <clears throat> Mr. Sylvester to introduce himself. He's actually here representing uh, Ambassador Shola Akula. Shola Akula is now in Canada. He's actually a member of the parliament in Canada, but he's originally from Nigeria. But over the last uh, seven years, He's been able, through his position, to uh, de to deliver to Kenya and Africa uh, and, and Nigeria over $50 million with donated goods, services, medical equipment, computers, et cetera, as part of his outreach for the Saga Foundation. Uh, but he also is here represented, as I said, by Sylvester. So, Sylvester, could you unmute and introduce yourself, please? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I'm sitting here in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba and uh, originally from Nigeria. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, the, uh, uh, the director representing Saga Foundation, uh, like uh, the uh, ambassador said, um, Shola is running for the office of the member of parliament. So I'm drafted into standing for him. After the last count, uh, we have been able to deliver to Africa and uh, recently to India, um, medical equipment worth over $125 million. And we are continuing to do that and uh, identifying those areas that would need uh, those, those kind of help. So my background, I'm a project manager. Um, I work in manufacturing here in Winnipeg. And uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I certainly appreciate your attendance. And also, I am the international uh, chairperson of the Saga Foundation in Nigeria. On June 23rd last year, they actually launched a specific office and website where we can register people around the world to join the United Nations Global Compact. Uh, most recently joining us is, is Dr. Fred Adore George from Nigeria. So Fred, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're just doing introductions now. So please introduce yourself, uh, the area where you are and the area where you have an impact in your company activities. Fred, the floor is yours, Dr. Fred. All right, good everyone. Um, it's great to be here with you guys once more. Uh, my name is Dr. Fred Alfred George. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, Innovation Services Limited. We are into uh, procurement services in the oil and gas industry. Uh, what we do is um, we we are a generic service for the major oil uh, company in Nigeria, such as um, Chevron, Exxon Mobil. Total and um, the Nigeria uh, competitive uh, uh, company in uh, um, in Nigeria. Yeah. So we've been in business for over um, twenty years. Um, we are known for, for supplies of um, every uh, oil and gas uh, tools, and um, we also uh, uh, take on uh, constructions uh, company. So it's nice to be here with you people. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much. Uh, what Fred didn't say is that his company has made a major investment in their youth and also providing op entrepreneurial opportunities for youth throughout not just Nigeria, but in other countries on the continent, including Ghana. So I do certainly want to thank and appreciate your being here. Uh, Mr. Ogun Lewe, are you able to unmute yourself, sir? Are you there? 
If so, he's representing, as I believe, uh, onegroup.com.ng. <clears throat> That's a startup. They're delivering solutions for energy poverty in Africa. And again, they've done me the honor of appointing me as their international chairperson for their advisory board. So Mr. Ogunlewe, can you unmute yourself, please? If not, we'll move on to the next person. Hello, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, calling in from Nigeria. And I am the um, co-founder of One Group, um, One Group here in Nigeria. And um, One Group um, is a multifaceted um, business. Uh, means to renewable energy, um, uh, access to market and um, um, waste uh, management too. And um, we are also looking at um, eradicating um, poverty at the last mile. And um, we are looking at, um, we have been um, looking at um, using our kiosk, um, one kiosk, which is also um, um, creating housing for the other um, subsidiary of the business. And um, we have also been um, connecting with the other part of the world, um, having a different advisory board um, to help um, look into eradication of um, poverty in um, Africa and also poverty in um, Nigeria. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm also excited to participate, participate in this event. Thank you so very much. Uh, we have a name here I'm not familiar with. Uh, Mus Musi Kenya, if you could, Chantel, if you could unmute and introduce yourself, I would certainly appreciate that. Hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Chantal Balestri. Yes, I'm uh, Italian and Swiss French, and uh, I am a concert pianist, a music professor, and entrepreneur. And this is uh, why I mean I do many many things. And today I'm here because I'm focusing on a new project uh, made possible also for the. Um, for the support of the CNACTCOM, which is the UNESCO in Kenya, and it's called Music Kenya, as you, as you saw. This project is for music uh, educator, music teachers, and we want to make this a sustainable program in order to accompany this uh, music teachers in uh, improving, uh, let's say, their very skill, the musical skills, but also helping their community in creating new musical programs. So it's it's both music education, but also social impact since they're impacting their, their, their community through music. And yes, so we are planning to start next year. Wonderful, thank you so much. We still have people joining. I will tell you that I'm also on the National Advisory Board here in the United States for um, Universal Hip Hop Museum. And yeah. in Africa, I'm the brand ambassador for uh, the grandson of Nelson Mandela and Generation Hip Hop Global. So we do look forward to finding ways to work and network with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Hakeem is still joining and we have Christine coming in. In the meantime, I'll transition to here in the United States. I'm not sure if Lady Alicia Hamilton can, uh, can, on video, can video herself, but whether she can or not, uh, Lady Alicia Hamilton, as I mentioned earlier, is the CEO of the Revelation Network, Universal Citizens Media Network and the Corey TV. She's been dedicating her life to providing a platform to give a voice to the unvoiced. And again, our intent is to produce broadcast quality content and particularly involving our youth as content creators. So we can we can actually provide <clears throat> infomercials, public service announcements and promotion of our events. So Lady Alicia, are you able to unmute and introduce yourself now or not? Okay, I don't hear her, but I do, do see that Hakeem has been able to join us. Hakeem, we're just doing basic introductions. Could you be so kind as to unmute and perhaps a video yourself or not, but introduce yourself to this team, please. Hakeem. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm just, I'm on the road. So, no worries. Yes, we hear you. Hey, uh, my name is Hakeem. I'm a tech, um, um, Enthusiasts, and um, um, I am from Sierra Leone, West Africa. I've been working on a different um, technology program and um, education with um, um, schools in Sierra Leone, um, integrating technology and education with um, um, schools in Sierra Leone. Okay, well, I believe I met you here through uh, 
Kenneth Warwick, if I'm not mistaken, and you're actually involved with providing these solutions, not just in Sierra Leone, but here in the United States as well. Is that correct or not? Yes, that's correct. Yes, we work together on uh, several projects here in the United States also. Yes. Okay, General, I think that was short enough. Uh, if there's anyone that I have not mentioned, please take this time to unmute and introduce yourself. And uh, then we'll turn it over to you, Joan, for the presentation. Yeah, I see that uh, Carol O'Connor hasn't introduced herself. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Carol O'Connor. I'm the founder and president of Rhyme and Reason Foundation and recently have been appointed to the executive committee of Generation Hip Hop Global. We've been working with indigenous peoples in the San Carlos Apache Reservation in Arizona for more than a decade and I have had some of the graffiti artists from there to come to Mississippi and also to Ethiopia where I used to live. I just returned from Kenya uh, one of the things we do is publish a book every year or almost every year called Telling Our Own Stories. And it's entirely writing and art from young people in about 15 different countries and cultures, including tribal people in the southern part of Ethiopia. And since the we, oh, also we've been having events in Ghana. We've had three in Ghana starting in 2007. The most recent one was two years ago. We're hoping to have one next year, but it depends on our invisible foe COVID as to whether we can do it or not. One of the things that we're working on very hard is combining hip hop with agriculture. We have friends in Uganda who have been doing that. And we're working now on a project for next year that would be at the Naka Valley Refugee Settlement in Western Uganda. They have an excellent art program there. And there are several of the young people who are working with people even younger than themselves, helping them with education and developing food security. So that will be our focus to combine these things, uh, art and music and sustainability for the climate and sustainability for food. As we all know, climate change is causing a great deal of problems for many people. There are climate refugees all over the world and there are going to be millions more. So we have to have some way to help young people to develop their own talents and to be able to provide for themselves and their families. So that's our goal. Wonderful, well, thank you for uh, attending. Is there anyone else that has not? Go ahead, uh, Christine. Yes, hi, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Vakta. I'm an educator, urban design and geospatial expert. Uh, I have 14 years of teaching architecture and urban design at a higher level college. And three years ago, I started my own company, Geo GeoGen, which is really using data and science into designing world. And last year, I created, I'm a CEO of GeoEduGaming because because from teaching, after 14 years of teaching and bringing data and science into the school and education, I realized how much power it has on the youth because we live in an environment where our kids are born in this digital world and they know the digital tool better than we ever did. And we have basically been putting them in classroom that were designed before their time and they get in living behind what they you know, used to. And I'm really excited to hear what uh, Dr. Carol had to say earlier about you know, the hip hop and connecting it to you know, what the kid want. Because I think that we are in a society where we have guided based on what we know, but those kids know what we don't know. And if we give them the tool, they will teach us how to guide them to actually you know, treat the environment the way we need to treat it. So my last um, my last company, which is called Geo Edge Gaming, it's really a platform that uses science. It uses gaming and also education in ways that actually make the student of the 21st century understand that he is important. It also helped develop the difference between us because we live in a society where we seem to look at what we have in common, but I think that our difference is more powerful than what we have in common. And if we start enhancing it and making people realize that they are unique, then they have one, you know, they have a power 
to actually bring what they have that we don't have. And if we start looking at each other as benefiting from their difference, I think that the world will have jumped a whole step. So I, I have lately developed um, a class called Capturing Urban Emotion. It's an app that actually allow people to talk about their story without any filter of anybody interpreting it. It's really just put it on the map and make sure that we understand how they feel in any space, you know? And I think that this is really bringing the power to the people to actually make sure that they tell their story, that they make sure that we understand how they feel in this environment so that when we design it, we understand why we're doing things that we do. So I'm really, I'm really, uh, uh, happy to be part of this and I have worked in um, Nairobi as well as well as uh, I just came back from uh, um, Liberia where I'm actually helping develop those type of content. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, wow, what a group. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that we actually did end up going with this. Thank you, Andrew, for, for, uh, for doing that. Um, so, wow. Um, I hope that we're all going to um, uh, network with each other if, um, if nothing else. Uh, so let's um, start with the uh, presentation. Um, if, do, you, uh, do you want me to share my screen or will you put it on um, Prince Andrew? Could you put the uh, PDF, uh, the IEEE um, PowerPoint on? Certainly. And so, Thanks. So while he's doing that, um, let me just say what the, the North American Working Group, uh, as I said, is a, um, a regional working group of um, IEEE Smart Village. We have to always point it out because IEEE is a big organization and we're under Smart Villages. We call it IX, ISBX for short. So if you see that anywhere, that's what that means. Um, uh, the North American Working Group, if we identify that something should be done in another uh, um, um, continent, we will work with the other regional working groups to facilitate um, concept development. Um, if you have a project um, that sort of takes them, them all in, we try to get IEEE Smart Villages uh, uh, management team to look at that as a separate thing. So we can help you uh, that's our job as the uh, North American Working Group is to help you to facilitate getting funding for uh, from IEEE for your project. So this uh, um, PowerPoint was uh, presented at our original meeting last month, last month, two months ago. <laughs> Boy, time really flies. And we had a number of questions that actually came out of this presentation, which I've submitted to the committee. So um, if you have questions after this, uh, we can also do that because we're trying to uh, make sure that if anyone submits um, a concept note that we help them through it and that to make the, the project uh, concept note development as easy as possible. And uh, uh, we, we wanna support that. So can I move this or, or do you have to go to the next one? Can I, oh, there we go. So the, this is the, uh, um, their charter. This is not our charter. Um, uh, so I'm gonna try to do it in a synopsis from our point of view. So basically um, we work with you to develop the uh, concept note is the first step. So you have an idea. Uh, we work it through and, you know, does it uh, fit the criteria of the three uh, uh, stools, which are empowerment or uh, education, energy and um, enterprise or entrepreneurship? Uh, does it fit those three stools? That's the first thing. Um, IEEE will give up to $200,000. You can get uh, $25,000 as a, as a starting point. They're looking at um, uh, uh, submissions to sort of have the 25K uh, bench, benchmark for us and then go to the 200, but that's not a decision. So I am going to encourage people to, um, if it's a good idea, let's just go with it. If, if your project is um, 200,000, IEEE will also help you. If you need more money, they will help you find other funding. It is also your job to, to find um, other fundings. There are criteria for the 
200,000, uh, uh, they're looking at that you can uh, impact um, up to a million people. So if you have a project, that's, that's sort of um, the criteria, but we can go through specific uh, details like that. So this is their charter is to um, assist entrepreneurs in the application process and to look at the qualification and, and that's what uh, their committee do. Next one. And I just wanna say, so uh, I mentioned the, the three um, uh, stools with enterprise, education and electricity. And we're sort of playing with, and which should always be equal to empowerment in, in the community. So that we're playing uh, I, electricity. I think we've, we, we've decided that it is the Institute for Ele uh, Electrical Engineers. So um, next. So like I said, this is the, the, the way it goes. You submit your uh, uh, proposal in a concept note and um, there's a small vendor agreement. Um, do you qualify for it? What, you know, uh, qualifications is obviously you have to be uh, uh, sort of covering the three uh, uh, pillars. And, um, and, and so we look at the initial criteria. It's, it's not very hard to, to qualify, um, uh, you submit, um, the concept paper and it, once it's approved, uh, is, uh, you can go on to the full application process. The smaller um, funding at 25,000 uh, um, is not, uh, you, you can go for the 200,000 right away if that's what you want to do. So just to reiterate, this is fund seed funding. It is you do not have to pay it back, but it is business development. It is to support someone that is an entrepreneur. It has to have an entrepreneur uh, component to uh, entrepreneur component to it where you earn money. It's a way to help you advance your business and uh, or um, it could. You know, I'm going to go off the record and say even a, a mission driven business, as long as it's generating uh, income, it is not uh, designed to be charity, it's designed to be a sustainable economic development uh, component to it. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. Next. So this is the, uh, and this is all going to be sent to everyone so that they, they, they understand this is how it works. Um, and I, I'm going to strongly suggest that this is also a working um, process. Um, so if you have questions to the working group, we go and advocate on your behalf, especially if it's a really good project. This is what the working groups, the regional working groups uh, job is, is to work with you, develop it and, and advocate for you. Um, at the end of the day, you have to carry it out, obviously, but um, that's, that's, that's our job. So uh, this is what uh, the process is. The executive summary um, or, or concept note, it's sometimes called. Um, and these are the components of the concept note. We do have um, a, a two pager that uh, we can, anyone that requests that we can send that to them and it, it includes all of these directions as well as any legal legalities that you need to address. So this is just a, a presentation to say, this is the process. So um, <clears throat> because of IEEE's Smart Village's uh, experience over the last number of years, um, the reason that they're looking at the smaller funding was that a lot of um, people needed help and support in capacity building. So they thought this was a, a way of addressing that. It, um, it used to be that if you had a really good project, you got the 200,000, but uh, the smaller amount is to to help the process. And, and then you it, uh, it doesn't exclude you from uh, applying for the, um, the 200,000. I'm going to say that uh, it, it actually is probably it helps you get the 200,000. So, uh, but I can't speak on their behalf, but that's what I would say for, from the North American Working Group. Next. Uh, before, I go you, next, before I go next, could you please yeah. read aloud those highlighted parts because it's too small for our audience oh. to read. So if you could help. Sure, like the um, uh, community partner. 
So the community partner, they're looking at what assets do you have? What are the needs? And did you do a, a, a community survey? So which you have to summarize for them to, to express what the needs are and why it's important. Um, the phase one, um, obviously, which would, what they're considering that this is your pilot, you're going to uh, discuss, you know, what is the vision, the, the vision for the three pillars, you have to address that they will not look at any project that does not address the three uh, pillars, which are again, um, electricity, education and enterprise, it must have those it's not one or the other, it's all three have to be addressed. Um, and so uh, um, they're looking at a plan and how uh, do you have do uh, donate donors in kind or, or um, cash it's, if it's good. Um, so somebody's asking a question. Um, I can send that to you. Um, if you sent me an email, I put my email address in the in the uh, chat. Um, so what is your execution model? Uh, you know, what are the roles? What, what, are, what are your partners? Um, do you have a committee? All of these things help you uh, develop your, um, uh, uh, help your criteria for a, a project. And, you know, obviously most uh, donors, the benefits to the uh, community, how do people um, benefit from it? And are there any economic initiatives? So that's the, the if you don't have an already existing uh, project and you're starting a new phase one is really a good way to start. And then um, moving on uh, to the phase two is to expand what you want to do. So if you, if you can look at it as the, the 25,000 is to start and to sort of like, I've got this idea, I've got the, the support, uh, I'm addressing the needs. Do, I want to go out there and sort of put it together and see, you know, uh, like a fishing sort of thing. And then say, yes, uh, we can do this. And uh, the 200,000 will help us with that. So in, in phase two though, they're looking at scalability. You know, how, how, how can you replicate that business? How can you expand it? Uh, what are the budget uh, or income over a two year period? Because when you do your reporting, uh, they're asking for reports, even if your project is um, uh, two or three years and they want quarterly reports and annual reports, you are required to give a, a report two years after the project has been completed in terms of the monies being spent. Um, so other factors they want to know is who else is um, contributing to, to the project. And that's a really point of strength if you have other people who are investing in your project. So I would really encourage that um, that happens. And they want to know, of course, if it's um, what is the structure of, of your business? Is it a not-for-profit? Is it um, a for-profit? How, how are you structuring it? And IEEE, if you don't need money, say, for example, you have a project uh, that uh, includes the three components. So for electricity, you want to generate electricity. And you don't need money per se, but you need technical support. You can ask for that. They will provide that for you. So you can look at it that way. It's not just um, uh, funding, it is technical support. And that is, is a lot as well. Um, so that's sort of the overall, you know, you introduce the idea what, what, and, uh, um, what, why, and how of the project is really what they're looking at. And the concept note does ask you those specific questions. Next. And so this is the process. <laughs> The uh, project development uh, committee are full of engineers. So of course this looks like an engineering um, <laughs> schema. So um, uh, basically it's just outlining what happens from uh, this, the different stages, uh, but we will work with you to, to make this a lot friendlier. So um, this is just for them, really. So I don't want to go through this because we will work with you once you have an idea. We will go through this with you. So basically, it's submissions. Submissions to the you work with the working group. 
we work with you to develop it and uh, we submitted, the working group submitted to the um, project development uh, committee. That's basically what that is saying. Next. So um, how is it evaluated? Um, I mean, it, this is important that you look at this, you know, um, the, your mission and your vision, is it strong and does it meet uh, and align with the pillars of IEEE? Um, it, it, obviously that's one of their biggest things is that it's, it's an organization and they, they believe in um, community development and these are the pillars that they've, they've uh, identified. Um, uh, how have you argued that your project, that there's a need for your project? So it's not just saying, I know that uh, we need to have connectivity in, in um, you know, a, a small rural area. It's, you know, what exists? How does the, uh, why is it needed in that area? What is the infrastructure that you would put in? What is a support system? That sort of thing. How, who will buy the, the uh, who will be provided for? Who would uh, pay for it? Those sorts of things. So one of the things that have, the next one, which is uh, non-existence um, of um, a similar project within a hundred miles that's being discussed as well, because, um, you know, why does that matter? But that's something that right now exists and you have to say, no, we're not competing. We're, uh, here, uh, we are developing our community. And what is the strength of the uh, project team, management team to implement the, what it is that you're, off, uh, that you're um, um, offering? You know, do you have the skills to actually implement it? I mean, I think that's a pretty good, everybody asks for that. And um, they would look at the, do you have the uh, community buy-in? Because in their, in IEEE Smart Village experience, um, the, in, in, in some of the uh, countries that they've worked in, if there wasn't buy-in from the community, it seemed to have been a problem. So they're asking for that. And as with any business plan, you know, what is the budget estimation um, broken down by phases and, um, and don't be scared. I mean, we all know that what happens in the world, we are in a changing world. You know, again, the re regional working groups will help you to define those things. And also if there's uh, time time delays and cost delays and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, we're here to help you as, a, as the um, working group. And uh, the, the monitoring and, and uh, evaluation uh, again, uh, depending on what's needed, uh, we will just the working group discuss that with you and and we'll highlight those if there is an, an issue. Next. So um, at the end of the project, your project, uh, the, the strategic business collaboration, sustainable development collaboration um, is what what they would like to have, you know, is your project um, addressing water, sanitation and health and other social and business infrastructure. So um, connectivity, business, uh, uh, entrepreneurial hubs um, and your, your, your uh, methodology such as uh, saying, well, I'm going to uh, do, do this and it sounds creative. Um, work with the, 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 um, North American Working Group, and we will help you define it so that it, it fits the, the the criteria. So you know, don't don't be. I'm a creative person, by the way, so I like creative things and like to work with people with creative things. So don't be shy. Next, and again, the overall strategy is to attract uh, your job and uh, Smart Village's job. You would work together if you need more funding. They will help you but as long as you're doing it as well. Um, and uh, they want your project, that's why they're, they would help you do not only do the seed funding and find other uh, uh, funding for you and, or with you, I should say, um, that it benefits uh, millions of people and it's scalable and that it um, educate people um, in your community. So the capacity building uh, is very important. Next. So the three, we talked about the three pillars, 
Um, again, this is all about us working with you, identifying um, the stages, the uh, metrics, and um, and work with you to, to complete your concept paper. Next. So I, I can take a couple of questions. I see there's some chats, whoops. Um, lots of emails, that's good. Um, so um, any, any, uh, uh, any questions, first of all, and I'm not the person to talk to, I'm not representing the, the project development uh, uh, committee. All I am is the uh, uh, vice president for the North American Working Group. And this is the process that we will be working with you. So um, if there, yeah. Can I, can I ask the, um, yeah, the definition of entrepreneur is, is yes, for me a yes. little confusing because there's yeah. so many different definitions. I assume yeah. a community community could be an entrepreneur. Is that right? It doesn't have to be a single person. It, it, it's what I interpret, um, and I've asked them for clarification on what that means. Okay. Thanks. So I, I will put it down again. I did put that in. I think you asked that before. Um, so any questions that you had sent or someone else, but I, I did, I personally want to know as well. And so did I shook. Yeah. So we have asked that question. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because we do have, I know some projects that are sort of community oriented in the community would be willing to take them on, right. which I think would be um, better than just one person because it's working together. But anyway, yeah. I'm glad to hear that you're going to get clarification on that. Yeah, no, that was something I went through it with a fine tooth comb for my own clarification. But I mean, I'm presenting what the, the project development committee is working with at the moment. And that's all I can present. Right. So I've there's many questions I've had in terms of because I'm an entrepreneur. So um, uh, any other questions? So if we don't and, you, and if you have other questions, so, um, let's go no, to no, just, to add, just to add yeah. there. Um, mm -hmm. I have seen many kinds of proposals going from all over, right? Um, mm -hmm. Proposals from us, like as a company, as an entrepreneur, who are submitting for some community. Proposal from inverse colleges going into that the colleges are working in a community and they will be identifying the community leaders who will take over the project. So the, the entrepreneurial nature is from the perspective of sustainability of those projects, wherever it is implemented. Because it, if it is given just as a charity, it won't last. So how do we make sure that the project itself uh, is sustainable? And also how do we make sure in uh, the funding that IEEE gives you or the, whatever funding you get these are seed funding it may not it's it's a catalyst right they just want to catalyze that uh, with the some seed funding so that you can get started and the community can continue to develop their own and then they start to work on leveraging other funding help you get some other funds as the project progresses so you know why the definition is not very clear and succinct, but I believe that if we go and apply as a community, or you apply as an organization, an NGO going and applying for it and saying that I will be there to handhold and take care of the sustainability of the project, or an entrepreneur or a company like us who can go and set it up and say that, hey, I will be the one who will hold handhold um, even though the pro project could be transferred to the community, like the one we are submitting for India, the project will be really in the name of the community, but we are there to implement, execute, and continue to support it. And that is where the scalability comes, right? The scalability they are looking at is that can a project in one area be scaled up and replicated into another area? So what is the replicability of the project? What is the scalability of the project? And that is what, uh, you know, that is what sort of a key um, that the committee looks at. 
uh, don't get too much into who is the you know whether you i'm an entrepreneur or not don't worry about that right now let's just say that you have a community need and there is to fulfill this need we need this kind of intervention an intervention that is scalable and that can be you know sustained okay just wanted to clarify a little bit so that we don't get the IEEE itself is struggling to define all these things. So they're going through a different, you know, transition phase. So at this time, let's make their life easier. Uh, this is how I work. This is how we have uh, developed whatever we have done. And it works well. I didn't yeah, know you us, were getting up to ask a question. Yeah, give us the opportunity to defend you and to bring your project forward is what Absolutely. I would say. So, yeah. you know, let's not get tied up in those. If it's a, a, a great project that benefits a, a community and it's scalable, let's, let, let's go to work for you. Let's fight for you. Well, just to let everyone know, as I said, this is usually uh, every Thursday, we, we have a scheduled time for uh, Indigenous Global Unity Summit. So I'll make a point at the first 15 minutes of every weekly session, we'll address this issue if there are any questions. And we've already made a commitment to carry these weekly events through Africa Day of next year. So we'll have a chance to build up momentum as we go forward. I do want to give recognition to Mr. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Hannah Khalili. I believe he just joined us. However, I did record everything, Hanif. We do have other people coming in. So I won't ask you to stay. We set aside two hours for this. So if you have time, we would, certainly would appreciate you staying there. But for the people that are just joining us, uh, please introduce yourselves. Uh, Hanifa, I think you're the first one. Hanif, you are on mute. Yes, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. I'm in the middle of America where it's Central Standard Time. My name is Hanif Khalil, and I'm definitely honored to be a part of this meeting today. Uh, I'm representing the Council of Elders in Wichita, Kansas. Our uh, council has been blessed to be the new seventh division of the Yilo Krobo Nation in Somalia, Ghana, West Africa. I have been officially adopted by the Yilo Krobo King. I, as well as three other women on the lead team of that project are involved in a five-year, 500-acre development. And I will be bringing updates related to that as the, in the future. And within that work, which is called Westinar, is the name of that project, Westinar, which is a Krobo name for younger sibling, we have the Ghana, Kansas, Muslim, mission. And that is a project related to education and agriculture. So um, again, I'm so thankful to be here among the honored attendees. And I look forward to my participation and contribution for us all to be better in this world we live in as human beings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. So Thank you so much, Andrew. Of course. Uh, Michelle Garrett, you're the last person coming in. If you can unmute and introduce yourself, just for your information, I recorded this to this point. So if we have your email address in the chat, I'll make sure you get a recording of this. But Michelle Garrett, if you can unmute and introduce yourself, we would appreciate that. Hello, my name is Michelle Garrett, and I am glad to be here. I'm so excited to hear the news and to learn information. Um, I was referred by Dr. and Pastor Gerald Johnson. And so that's why I am here joining you today to see what I can glean and learn and see what I can also bring to the table to assist in any way that I possibly can. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. But could you please tell us a little bit more about where you're calling from and um, what your, and et cetera? Yes, sir. Well, I'm from San Diego, California. I am the owner and director of a program called Leaders of Tomorrow. 
It is really for children who are under the age of 12. Prepare them to walk in the spirit of excellence, to understand what integrity, honesty, and respect is, making sure that they are giving the ability and opportunity to grow and to learn that they will become future leaders. These children come from very diverse backgrounds, from India, from the Philippines, from Asia, Black Americans, um, African children as well that attends our program, and the list goes on. But we want to give them the tools to be empowered, to, um, um, to be strong, to be educated, to be articulate, um, to be able to represent their cultures, to represent their home training, to represent uh, um, in a positive manner and to really just truly reach for the stars and to be all that they can be. So I believe our future does start with children and I've been in education for over 30 years. So this is my heart and my passion. So I'm definitely glad to be a part of this and to listen and once again to glean and see what else we can do to move our children forward. Well, thank you so much. If you're near your computer, please take the time to include your email address and your organization in the chat. I will, of course, get this out to, uh, to, to Gerald afterwards, but I do want to make sure if you so choose to include that information in the chat. Joan, there's, yes, several, yes. there's several questions in the chat. If those people that asked those questions would unmute themselves, that would be good. Or otherwise, Joan, perhaps you could take a look to see what we could address. Right, so uh, thanks, um, Andrew. Um, so the, the first one is about the deadline for submitting. Um, uh, there's really no deadline. That's, I know Irene asked this question uh, as well. Um, and I did submit your question to, to IEEE. So what we've gotten them to at least tell us is that they're, they're going to look at three times per year because we need to tell the community the dates. However, what I say is if you have a project and we work on it, we work on your behalf and submit it uh, to them directly and work on it. So I, that's what I would encourage people to do. Um, so we, we're not restricted by their deadlines. We're restricted by uh, the number of projects. They want projects. We, we need projects. I mean, they're on a huge uh, um, um, job for uh, uh, raising funds at the moment uh, in the next couple of months. So, you know, please, we need projects to, to, to defend. We need projects to, to, to get. We want to have projects uh, in North America. <laughs> well, thank I guess you. what I'm saying, don't, don't, don't hesitate. If you have an idea, I'm I, I'll send um, Andrew so he can work with his team. I'll send you the concept notes so you can disperse it to your team. Uh, Irene has our, uh, is one of our projects that we're doing. Like, we want to work with you to develop them. Okay. And so. Excellent. Was there something else? Was there another question? Um, anyway, if not, can we have um, a shift to a quick, um, uh, I think it's five or 10 minutes of a, a possible uh, um, a, a solution that I really love, but um, uh, I'm biased, oh, you know? So yeah, Joan, yeah, <laughs> yeah? yes, 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 and yes is all I'll ever tell you. So <laughs> yes, and everybody knows I like to hear yes. So uh, <laughs> go ahead, Ashok. So I will try to do justice in five minutes, but you go to 15 minutes. But let me well, just uh, explain. No, no, no you have time. The you ball is time. in your court. Don't rush. Make sure you're clear. We have people that are coming in. We have people <laughs> that are watching around the world. So be Wait as, yes, go. Ball's in your court. And you can share your screen uh, if you like. Ball's in your court. Yes, I will share my screen. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay uh, and this is the way uh, this is Jones way of uh, of making sure that I'm always on top of things she, she calls me five minutes early and says you are attending